So, yeah, welcome. We are presenting uh, Bloop, rapid motion capturing using Blender and Microsoft Kinect. Um, please be aware that our software is very sensitive, so we need silence when we do our demo. I hope that's all right. Um, so, yeah, who are we? Uh, I'm Florian. This is handsome fellow is Nicolas. Hi. Just turned 25 today. <laughs> Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> we are both students. We are both students uh, of the digital media program at the University of Bremen in Germany, and we just finished our bachelor's bachelor thesis with Blender with those fancy topics up there. Nobody does actually care about. And now the question is, what is Bloop? Bloop is the sound, is the name given to an ultra low frequency and extremely powerful underwater sound detected by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration in 1979, says yeah. Wikipedia. But not for us. For us, it's a blender loop station. <laughs> yeah, Bloop is a Python add on for Blender 2.59 that brings speech control, motion capturing, and digital puppetry to home users using Microsoft Kinect. So our motivation for this is obvious. Keyframe animation takes a whole lot of time. And everyone who does animation has no time for experimenting. I mean, just try out things. You can't do that. It takes way too much time. And also, other artists just can't enjoy animation, like, like actors, or puppeteers, or just beginners. And motion capturing is really expensive. I mean, at the university, we have this moving suit, and it costs like 10,000 euros a piece or something. It's just weird. So nobody can do that at home with standard hardware. Well, standard hardware for motion capturing, I mean. Oh, yeah, and if you're only one guy, uh, motion capturing is just a pain. And, <laughs> yeah, well, about by yourself. It's just like you have to run up to your computer, start recording, go to your tracking space, act out stuff, run back to your computer. It just sucks. <laughs> so we thought a user should be able to fully animate a 3D character with a minimum amount of time, experience, and technological knowledge required and without breaking his or her workflow by using different modes of interaction. So, so the idea was to, to implement a, a loop station. Like, um, I don't know if you, if you know these guys who, who make music with their loop station in front of them and they're recording sound and doing it with their motion. But our idea was to, to uh, transpose that to animations and just switch the modal channel. So this is how the, the usual music loop station works. You record sound and physical motion, like you turn knobs, you press buttons, controls the actual system. We do this. <laughs> we, <laughs> we use sound to control the system and we record motion. Pretty easy, actually. And this is how our system overview looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have the user who talks to the Kinect and acts in front of the Kinect, and the Kinect just sends data to Blender. And now we'll provide you with a tiny, tiny demo. Yeah, like uh, like said before, you should be really quiet because we don't know how uh, how fragile the speech recognition system is.
So now it's, 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 uh, it recorded the animation and now it's looping the animation that we recorded just now. Okay, so, so much for a quick so demo. That's, that's our system in general. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah. uh, hi. Ha, I'm back. So, our main features are we can Calibrate, no, we can create new mappings via gestures. The idea is um, you somehow select a feature of a character and you just wave with your hand or with your foot or whatever you want to map to it. And the system recognizes that and stores this mapping. Uh, that, so you create like two, three mappings, um, whatever you like, and then you calibrate those. You saw how we calibrate it, and basically the system takes a snapshot of your actual pose and does some fancy stuff. I don't want to go into details. It's not that complicated, actually. Uh, and then you can quickly record animations and also layer recordings to different mappings, as you just saw. Uh, oh, yeah, and that was the last one. Yeah. <laughs> and you and you can record animations of more than one user acting on the same character, which is handy if you like have a character with, I don't know, six legs and three people and every leg should move at the same time uh, while you're recording. Yeah. So that's what our system understands until now. You can tell it to go into mapping calibration or recording mode by saying mapping calibration or recording. Uh, Context-sensitive stuff like start, where you can start calibration or start recording. And next and previous, we use that now to cycle through our predefined mappings. And uh, the workflow itself looks like this. You start uh, somewhere, most likely at mapping. You map something, you get a calibration, <coughs> you calibrate your mappings, you get a recording, you record something, so you go back to mapping. Uh, map something new, calibrate it, and record again until you have your animation finalized. Yeah, our whole system consists of three different modules. Yeah, w one of them is the uh, um, OC client, which uh, interacts with the Microsoft Kinect and then sends the data over, over the OC via the OC protocol to the new add on. Yeah, well, like I just said, it interacts with this uh, Microsoft. Well, it interacts with the Microsoft Kinect to get the skeleton data, as well as um, with the Microsoft Speech at API, which uh, recognizes the speech and, and uh, sends both data over OSC. The library we use the library use uh, named Bespoke, Bespoke OSC library, and it's written in C sharp. 
Yeah, and then in Blender, hi, hello. Okay, so in Blender, we have two add-ons. We have the NUI add-on, which receives the OC data and presents it, like it stores it basically somewhere in the Python environment. Uh, we use PyOC from Ryan Coiner, which we only slightly modified, so it works with Python 3. Oh yeah, and it's written entirely in Python, as well as the Bloop add-on. Uh, the Bloop add-on is the piece of software that actually manipulates the character um, and that does all the other stuff, mapping, calibration, uh, and it reads the data directly from the NUI add-on. And that's basically just one big modal operator that runs on a timer, which pulls the main loop, and yeah, Python. So yeah, good question, what's that good for? Um, as we said in the beginning, uh, it's intended to let novice users and other artists create 3D animations. Like for digital puppetry, that's pretty much what we just did. You just map some arbitrary feature of yours to some arbitrary feature of the, of the virtual character and you just move it like you take a puppet's hat, move it around. Uh, you can also call that performance animation. Uh, or you could also use this for example, perhaps for live performances. Maybe if it's not too loud. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, another obvious one is uh, animation prototyping. Uh, if you just want to get a quick overview of your scene, how could it look like? How would, how would it be nice to look? What, what if I do this? You can just act it out quickly and you have your results in pretty much no time. Um, also, it's just fun to experiment with uh, like motion capturing in Blender in general with stuff like this. Uh, so we encourage everyone who wants to try this thing out, um, extend it, um, try it out, use it for whatever you want. You can th visit our project website, this URL, and you can download it from there. You can download it from there, actually, and um, use it. just and try use it. Maybe um, send us feedback. Not, not everything is working as it should. For example, interactive mapping system does not work. We use predefined mappings now, which are hard-coded, but that's just minor drawback. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess yeah, that's it. We're pretty quick. So oh. thanks for listening. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too confusing. Yeah, questions. How is the actual animation information stored? Is it key frame wise? Let's say they have a video frame per second. I mean, that's a shit lot of data. True. Um, we haven't, we, we didn't get into that yet. Um, we want at some point to use data reduction algorithms. Uh, but for now, uh, our main interest was the interaction. Uh, you mean like just to create a motion capturing library using the Kinect? Well, actually, not Kinect, but Kinect is not just Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um... Yeah, um... We're working on that right now. We did that using uh, inverse kinematic handles, where we pretty much put a handle on every joint of a human figure, and that worked pretty well. Um, we have a demo video somewhere in the internet where you can see that. Um, but it's pretty early still. Yeah, we, we finished the day before yesterday. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> on time. Please.
Yeah, it's fairly easy. I mean, we have we 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 have an alphabet of um, of joints. It's like R uh, underscore hand or something. Um, we use the O skeleton convention actually. I don't know if you know that. And um, we also have a um, we also have a a, a, um, a file coming with Bloop. Um, where there are example mappings, and it's really easy. You'll see, you'll understand. Oh, it's just yeah. position of the joints because the Kinect does not provide us with uh, rotational data at all. Yeah, that's, that's quite difficult because um, the question is how to distinguish between commands for the system and like motion you want to record. So that's a thing, thing you, you have to get around. Well, yeah, so at some point you might... Oh yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> Hmm. We we could have also have used like uh, uh, paddles or something, yeah. but 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 we found it mm, we found it it made more sense to actually separate those modal channels because it's 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 just clearer clearer for the user and also for the system it's just easier for us. Yeah, true. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we could extend our our library of commands to pretty much as much as we want. That's just like the initial set we created for today. Um, yeah. Are there hardware requirements for the uh, installation? Do you, do you use it all on one computer, or do you use more than one computer? Uh, we used one computer. Uh, oh. In general, you should be able to use. Two computers, but we kind of forgot to add a feature where you can <laughs> enter the IP address where the OC data goes to. So right now you need one computer. And you need a Kinect and the Microsoft SDK installed. And you need a Windows computer. That's the point. I don't know. We use Windows 7. <laughs> I mean, no, it does not because we use the Microsoft Kinect SDK. And so, so then you can say um, our requirements are those of the Microsoft Kinect SDK. If you, that's what you want to go through. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you can still, you can still, if you want to use O Skeleton. I don't know if that works only for Windows, but uh, that's when, where we started with, and that works too. But then you have to, uh, then you can't use speech commands at all. Any other questions? All right. Thanks. Oh, okay. So thanks for listening.